right, guys, good morning to you. We are live. I want to invite you to come join me. On this rainy Thursday morning, this is the 23rd day of April 2020. It's about 10.36 a.m. And I want to invite you to come join me as we look at some scripture, part of our daily devotion. We've been, since Monday, we've been talking about the subject of I am. And I'm not going to rehash everything that we've talked about all week. You can just go on to our um, Facebook page there. You can find um, the, the, the devotions. Um, we are talking now about the seven I am's that Jesus proclaimed in the book of John. And we're working on the second one. Um, yesterday we spoke of Jesus saying, I am the bread of life. And today we're going to talk about the second I am that he proclaimed, which we find, find in St. John chapter 8, verse 12. And he says, I am the light of the world. Now, I want you to understand that there is a lot of information um, on this subject, and there's no way in this world would I be able to even scratch the surface of, of all the information. You know, um, I kind of get disappointed in myself because I'll rewatch these devotions, and then I'll be saying, well, I wish I would have mentioned this, and I wish I would have brought this point out, and, and all that. But listen, just in the short time that we do our devotions, there's no possible way that I can get every point um, across. And, you know, so I'm just trusting and praying, you know, the Lord will guide and direct, and you guys get help out of this. Um, <clears throat> so let's get right on into this, because there is much information I want to give you. Um, Jesus, in John chapter 8, verse 12 um, we alluded to this on Tuesday um, when Jesus was talking with the Pharisees and, and angered the Pharisees so much that they picked up stones and was throwing it at them as Jesus slipped away out of the temple and got away. Um, but they were seeking to stone him right then and there because of the conversation. Um, they said, Are you greater than our father Abraham? And Jesus said, Before Abraham was, I am. And that statement, I am, was what God gave, told Moses to tell the Israelites. And so, therefore, Jesus was putting himself on the same level as, as God, which he should be because he's the Son of God. But they didn't know that. They didn't believe that. And so they was thinking that Jesus was being blasphemous. And, you know, they just lost their minds and they was going to stone him. You know, but Jesus is God in the flesh. And Jesus is you know, <clears throat> the son of the living God. And so he said, I am, you know, before Abraham was, I am. And then we talked yesterday, he said, I am the bread of life in John chapter 6. Today we're looking at this statement, John chapter 8, I am the light of the world. And this is what Jesus said. He said, then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And so when you think about what Jesus is saying here, um, I am the light of the world, um, you'll, you'll come across you know, something you know, very interesting that we're going to cover um, about the light. And what does it mean, you know, the light of the world? What does light represent? And so just for a few moments, I'm going to give you that. I've got UPS coming in, so I'm going to get ready and pause this for a second, and then we'll get back um, to it. So again, um, I just want you to think of this before I pause. Jesus said that I am the light of the world. He that followeth shall not walk in darkness. Be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back. I hope I didn't lose you all. But anyway, so that's what we're talking about today. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Um, if you follow me, you shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And again, I just, in a nutshell, this is what Jesus was saying, okay? He was saying, you know, he's making the statement that, you know, he was the exclusive source 
of spiritual light. No other source, no other way can you make it to God, make it to heaven other than Him. That's what he was saying when he said, I am the light of this world. You know, he was saying, and, and, and I'll, I'll give you scripture in a minute to, to kind of give you an understanding of that because, you know, we're going to find out that, you know, God is light. And Jesus says, I am the light of the world, you know. And these statements, when we read this, this scripture, you know, we, we look at it and, you know, we, I think we look at it differently than the way the Pharisees and, and, and the people in Jesus' day would look at it. Because we look at it, I am the light of the world. In other words, we look at Jesus as being some bright figure that we follow, you know, but back in the Bible day, back in Jesus' day, he said, I am the light of the world. If you understand the scripture, you know, it says God is light. Now, wait a minute, time out. So what Jesus is saying is if God is light, and Jesus said, I am the light of the world, Jesus is saying, I'm God. And so therefore, the Pharisees is pulling their hair out saying, what are you saying? What are you doing? You know, Moses, you know, back in the old Bible, if you would, you know, Moses under the law would, would command people to be stoned for blasphemous talk. And so here's this man that is proclaiming to be the Son of God or God in the flesh. And the Pharisees, the religious leaders, are just losing their minds because, you know, you're talking crazy is what they're telling Jesus. And so, you know, we got to get an understanding when we read scriptures and verses like this. You know, that's why I encourage you all to study and really dig into the Word of God to really understand the scripture. You know, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He's not just saying I'm the leader of the world. I'm, he's not just saying I'm the figure that you need to follow. But he said, I am the light of the world. And then... We find scriptures where God is light. So Jesus has said, I am God in the flesh. And the Pharisees just about lost their minds. In context of this verse of scripture, you'll find, that's why I encouraged you a couple days ago to read chapter 8 of John. You'll find that Jesus early in the morning went to the Mount of Olives. He went into the um, temple and he was teaching the people. And while he was teaching the people, the scribes and Pharisees had brought in a woman and, and pretty much threw her at the feet of Jesus and said, We caught this woman in the very act of adultery. What, and, we, and, and they went on to say mo, the law of Moses said you know people who are caught in adultery should be stoned which the Pharisees being all religious and pious and better than everybody else you know didn't even keep the law because I don't think it said that only the women gets punished I think it was the men as well but they didn't bring the man they just brought the woman so they're at fault already but anyway so they knew the law they knew what the law said but they tried to trick Jesus into messing up the scripture says they tried to find accusations or you know to accuse him and Jesus stooped down on the ground and started writing with his finger on the ground I'd love to know what he was drawing or writing nobody really knows but I'd kind of like to know um, myself but some says that you know he was starting to write the accusers sins down in the ground I that's good thought but that's no bible for that but anyway so finally they kept on asking jesus well what should you do what would you, what would you do and finally jesus answered the question by saying let he that have no sin cast the first stone and therefore you know that put them in a bind because if they would start throwing the stone then they're saying that they're sinless and then they'd be blasphemous as well so they all just started dropping their stone one by one from the oldest to the youngest and they left and Jesus asked the woman, said, Woman, where is thy accusers? And she looked around and said, I have no accuser, accuser. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. And so that was what was going on. And then after that incident, Jesus turned back to the people that was watching this whole thing. And then he started teaching them again. And that leads us to John chapter 8, verse 12, where Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And so, you know, understand that he is God in the flesh, is what he was saying. He went on to say, He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. 
a lot of thoughts been coming in my mind and like I said I'm not going to keep you long but there are a lot of things that floods my mind and I want to share with you and just bring some points out but you know here's the thing Jesus said that I am the light of the world imagine what would happen to our planet if the sun would burn out right now According to study, according to Science Magazine that I was reading in, they're saying that it takes about 8 minutes and 20 seconds or something around that um, time for the light from the sun to reach the earth. So if the sun would go out right now, then this earth would have light for 8 more minutes. But then we would be in total darkness. But that's not the only problem. Understand this, that without the earth, the sun out in the universe, without the sun, life would end here on earth. We would freeze. We would have no, you know, not only does the sun give us light and give us warmth, but it also, you know, um, helps our food source, you know, as you know that, you know, photosynthesis synthesis, if I can say that word, um, where the plants, you know, get their food source from the sun. And they breathe in our carbon dioxide and they breathe out oxygen for us. And so what the scripture, you know, what we're learning here that Jesus is the light of the world, you know, without the natural sunlight, this life that we know would end. We would freeze. We would starve. There would hardly there'd be no oxygen, you know, because it helps. You know, the sun helps the um, oxygen and, uh, and the gases on the earth. And I can give you more um, scientific facts, but you know, I think you've got the point here. But what I'm trying to get at is Jesus said that He is the light of the world, just as we depend on the sunlight to sustain life. We must depend on the light of Jesus Christ. We must depend on Him to sustain our spiritual life, is what the Scripture is telling us. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Think about what light means. It's not just a light bulb. It's not just a flashlight. It's not a you know, fire from a candlestick. But you know, it is the life-giving source of light, just like the sun it sustains the earth and, and sustains the life on the earth. So does the light of Jesus Christ sustain our spiritual life. This is what Jesus was speaking about. And we depend on Him. And I went on and, and looked at some other things here and I thought was interesting. You know, and I'm going to give you the scripture when Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And the Pharisees was just, once again just losing their minds because they're saying, wait a minute, you're putting yourself on the same level as God. Look in 1 John chapter 1, verse 5. It says, This then is the message which we heard of him and declared unto you, that God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. You notice the scripture says that God is light. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. You notice that he said, God is light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Notice they didn't say, I am a light. He didn't say, Jesus didn't say, I am a light of the world. When you look in 1 John 1, 5, you didn't see where it says, God is a light. It says God is light. God is life. God is our source of power, of, of everything that we need. That's what God is. Remember when I was telling you Monday that God said, I am that I am? He said, I am. Anything that you need me to be, that's what I am. He's self-sustaining. You know, he doesn't need anybody, anything, you know, to help him along. He is and always was and always will be. And this again says God is light. He didn't say a light. He didn't say, you know, a reflection of light. God is the very source of light. 
in him is no darkness at all. And again, if you go back into our main scripture in John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. Look at the word walk. He that follows after me shall not walk in darkness. What does it mean by shall not walk? If you translate that is what they was what he was saying is you shall not live in. You know, your walk with the Lord. You know, your experience, you living with the Lord. You know, that's what he's talking about when he says your walk with God, your walk with Christ. It says, He that followeth me shall not walk or shall not live in darkness. And darkness represented sin. So it says that he that um, followeth me shall not live in sin, shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. I just want to bring that out to you. Just as there is no darkness in God, Jesus said there is no darkness in him. And if we follow after him, then there will be no darkness in us. Now here we go. I'm going to drive this point home and then I'm going to close up here. So Jesus said, I am the light of the world. In other words, there's no darkness in him. There's no sin in him. And he promised us, he said, if you follow after me, you walk after me, you live after me, there'll be no darkness, there'll be no sin in you. Look in 1 John, we just read 1, 5, where it says God is light. Let's finish that thought in, in John 6 and 7. John, 1 John 1, 6 and 7. It says, if we say that we have fellowship with him and walk or live in darkness, live in sin, it says we lie. And do not the truth. Man, that's close. Oh, I love Jesus and I live for him every day. If we and this and, and notice what the scripture says. It says that if you walk in darkness, in other words, if you live in darkness, if you live in sin, it didn't say if you make a mistake. It didn't say if you tripped up, if you've made a bad decision. You know, listen, Paul said, I would that you not sin, but if you do sin, you have an advocate with the Father making intercession for us. So, you know, if you mess up, if you commit sin, you know, repent of it. Ask for forgiveness. But this is talking about living in sin. Listen, you can't repent of your sins as long as you're living in sin. Now, I know that's not popular preaching. I know people don't like to hear that. But listen, you cannot live in sin daily and still try to find forgiveness for it. The only way that we can find forgiveness of our sins is if we repent, which means to change our mind and turn away from it. I have a lot of people that don't agree with that. There are people that's shacking up with each other, living in sin, committing the adultery every time they sleep with each other, but then they wonder why God's blessings and favors are not on them. And when you try to tell them, oh, you're judging. No, I'm not judging. I'm answering your question with the Word of God. And we cannot live in sin and expect God's blessings on us. Ouch and amen, say what you want, delete me, block me, you know, call me a milk cow, whatever you want to do. But it doesn't change the truth. And the truth is universal. It's just it's not just for truth for them, it's truth for me, it's truth for my neighbors, it's truth for my parents, it's truth for every one of us. We cannot live in sin, daily live in sin, and still expect God to forgive us. We got to stop sinning. And that's where Jesus comes in. Repent, call on him. Verse 7 of 1 John says, But if we walk or live in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. I mean, my goodness. This is just as clear as it can be. And what it's teaching us. So let me read 1 John 1, 6 and 7 again. It says, If we say that we have fellowship with Him, with God, and we walk or live in darkness or live in sin, we lie. We're a liar. And we do not the truth. 
But he goes on to say, but if you walk in the light, as God is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanseth us from all sin. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Let me back it up. God is light. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. And then they encourage us to be the light of the world by living and following after Jesus Christ. Not living in darkness, but living in the light. Let me close with this. So if we know that God is light, and we know that Jesus is light, the light of the world, Understand, it is God's plan for you and I as believers to shine His light and become more like Jesus every day. Listen, understand, and I'm going to give you some scripture here, and then we're going to close this up. In 1 Thessalonians, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 5, it says, Ye are all the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 8 says, For you were sometimes darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk, live as children of light. You're sometimes darkness. We were in sin, but now we are in the light. We are in God. We are in Jesus Christ. And it says, So therefore, Live like children of light. If you're going to be a Christian, live like you're a Christian. That's what it's saying. If you're saved, then live like you're saved. Don't live a defeated life. Don't live a sinful life if Christ saved you from your sins. If you lived, and, and this is a lot of, you know, there's a word called institutionalized, and there are people that's been in prison for, you know, a very long time, and then they finally make parole or something, and they get released. But for a very long time, they still live as if they were in prison, even though they're free. And a lot of times, people are institutionalized from sin because they lived in sin for so long that when Jesus Christ set them free, they don't know how to live free. Listen, Jesus Christ came to make us free from sin. He broke every bondage of sin that we can live in the light of Jesus Christ. So, this is what Ephesians is saying. You were sometimes darkness, now you are light in the Lord. Walk, live like you're a child of light. The Bible teaches us this in Matthew, well, Matthew chapter 5, verses 14, 15, and 16. And I'm going to close with this verse, these verses here. It says, You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Now look at verse 16, Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine before men, that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. We're no longer in sin. We're no longer in darkness. But now we are in the light of God. Listen, He encourages us to let the world, let our light so shine before men. And when they say let your light so shine before men, they're not talking about your own life. It's not talking about your own works. It's not talking about your own righteousness, your own goodness, because the Bible teaches us those are filthy rags. But when it says, let your light so shine before men, it's talking about your light that you inherited from God. Look at the moon. The moon has no light whatsoever other than what it reflects from the sun. If the sun went out, the moon would not have no light whatsoever. The moon reflects the light of the sun. We'll say, oh man, that moonlight is you know, really bright. Well, really, it's reflecting the sun. <laughs> you and I need to reflect the light of Jesus Christ. We need to reflect the S-O-N. We need to reflect the Son of God. When, the, when we go out into the world and let our light shine, let the light of Jesus Christ shine before men that it will lighten up the dark paths that they're traveling. 
listen, if you lost something outside at nighttime, unless you don't have a light, you try to go out and find it in the darkness, but isn't that much easier when there's a big old light shining that you can look for something? It's almost next to impossible to find something in pitch dark, pitch blackness. But if you have that light, light reveals things. Light will reveal your sin. Light will reveal a lot of things. That's why, you know, people go to the bars and everything, and everything's dark and dim in there. I don't think people would do half the things they did at a bar if everything was light, lit up like a stadium. People likes to do things in the darkness. There's scripture about that, and there's a lot more I can give you, but I've already been on here a long time, so I'm going to get off of here. But listen, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. In other words, he said, I am God in the flesh coming to save you. If you just follow me, no longer walk in darkness, but follow the light. I'll give you the give you life a light of life he said folks let us follow Jesus Christ today let us be the light in this world but let us reflect the light of Jesus Christ to this lost and dying world I know I got a lot to say and there's a lot more to say but I'm going to wrap it up so listen Lord willing we'll be on tomorrow and we're going to look at the third I am that Jesus proclaimed and we'll talk more about that um, tomorrow so listen thanks for watching hit the share button if you don't care have a great day God bless you